Welcome back to Grassroots Media. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Southbound Real Estate Sean Jones Show, where we cover everything on Rebel Hill with the South Green Rebels. As always, I'm joined here with Rebels head coach Sean Jones. Coach, how you doing this evening? Doing great, doing great. So coming off of a win against Cumberland Gap, go ahead and jump right into it. 47 to nothing win in week three, starting your season 2-0. Starting with a 1-0 and record in conference slate, how good did it feel to get that win in week three? Well, it was big, you know, main reason because it's on a Thursday night. You know, we got that short week of practice, but uh, but we felt pretty good because we had, you know, the week before was our off week, kind of kind of weird with, with that kind of uh, way it worked out. But, uh, but overall, we felt like we played pretty well. You know, uh, right off the bat, set the tone, got the three and out, got the punt return for a touchdown, and then uh, so uh, we played pretty well that night. Got to enjoy Friday night too. Did you go scout a little bit? Any? No, I, I stood stood at home, uh, uh, stayed at home. Excuse me, with the wife. So uh, got to take, got to you know, do stuff with the wife when you have those off games. Uh, so uh, there's really, you know, we try to scout, you know, our off week. But uh, last Friday night I had some stuff to do with her, so I stayed at home. I'm sure you had a good day Saturday also. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Getting college football. Uh, Tennessee got a win, so I'm sure that made you happy. To yeah, start the day. you know, like I say, you know, uh, your marriage and your kid been born in college football, so. Uh, in that order there, so it, it was a good weekend. It was a good weekend for you too, because you got the game over on Thursday night, got to spend the night with the wife Friday night, and then boom, you wake up the next morning. Tennessee plays in only a couple hours. That's, that's, that's exactly right. And then of course we had football Sunday and Monday. Uh, that's so, correct. So it, uh, it was a good weekend. I like those kind of opening weekends, college football. Uh, you know, I could watch, you know, football every night. But uh, but anyway, if, if you do that, then you might get kicked out of the house. Hey, the good news is from now until about January or February, you'll have football every single weekend. That's now. exactly right. That's what's exciting. Yep. Every single Sunday. Friday, every... Saturday, Sunday. Yep. That's and then like. some Mondays. Yeah, exactly. Not many people watch Monday night games. No. Anymore. Well, we got JV games, so we do have Mondays too. So that's, that's, oh, that's correct. That's, that's correct. It, so. Let's talk about the game a little bit too. Uh, you got ahead very quickly from the start. You'll probably see some of the plays behind us too from that game. But you didn't even have to jog the offense onto the field. You mentioned a little bit Deion Blair returning that punt for about 40 yards to the end zone. Defense forces him to turn the ball over again, and then one offensive play, Nash goes into the end zone again. So you're up 13 to zero with one offensive play. How great did that feel to get ahead that early without even jogging the offense? Well, the I mean that, that that's real big error. And actually, we got another three and out, or excuse me, not three and out. We we stopped him, and on the very next first play, uh, we scored again. Yeah, T.J. Buckner out there. So. Uh, so, so that feels real good when you can score like that. And it was kind of crazy when we got the stats. We only had the ball 20 offensive snaps. Uh, 15, uh, excuse me, 10 of those was 30 plus yards, and five of them was 15 plus yards. So you're looking at 15 on 20 over 15 yards. So that's that's really really productive on the offensive side of the ball. And then, like I say, the, the defense, though know, they had the ball 65 offensive plays, but they only had 136 total yards. So so it was one of those things where you know we would hold them. They might they might get a first down here and there, but uh, overall. Uh, you saw with the kicking game and all that. Overall, it's just a good, well-rounded game to get the conference slate started. And the defense, too, pitching another shutout, allowing them to less than 150 yards. Uh, I think Dion had an interception also to go with that punt return, but special teams was on their game, too. And you mentioned it, it's a well-rounded victory for you all on all sides of the ball, including special teams. But the defense was something I was really impressed with because we had talked about how tough of an offense it is to scout. It's a very simple concept that's not so simple to defend against, and they did a really good job with that. I don't think you really saw any plays from their offensive unit that went more than 15 yards in that game. No, I think I think maybe they had a couple, maybe even go 10. But, yeah, it's all a misdirection because you've got to be very disciplined when you play that team because they're, they're very well coached. Uh, he does a great job. Uh, and, and they're very well coached, so you got to be very disciplined. And we, we was the night, and this is three years in a row that you know they've been back in the conference uh, with him running that offense. And so it's uh, it, it's been an uphill battle each year, but we felt like we get better and better each year because again you figure out what they're doing and, and, and you play discipline football, and uh, that helps out. But that first year was really tough, you know, because you really didn't know what they were doing. Uh, but but again, uh, great victory that night. Got a lot of players I want to talk about too because when you win 47 to nothing, there's a lot of players that end up having big moments throughout the game. Talked about Dion with that punt return and interception. Nash Raiders, another I want to talk about. He had the first offensive play go into the end zone. And then the first offensive play of the second half also went 80 yards into the end zone, which I think Dion ran back that kick into the end zone, but it was called back due to a flag. Yeah. Nash had another great night. Uh, he had a great night week one against Crockett. He's had an amazing start to his sophomore season. Oh, yeah, he's, a, he's had a real good start, you know, and that's one thing about it. You know, we feel like that, that he's coming to his own there at the, at the two back. And, uh, and like I say, we still got those skilled people. We've got Dion and TJ, and uh, you got Charlie out there in the slot, and then you've got Race out there uh, on one side. You got Trey Gentry had scored already this year, so 
you know, pretty much, you know, we, we've got a lot of stuff that, that we can do. Uh, Ray scored from the backfield the other night, then he, then, uh, he threw one. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, it, that was that was, that was was good to see because, you know, we're you know still trying to decide who was going to be our backup quarterback if something happened to Sue Song. And uh, so, so it was good to see, see everybody play well on the offensive side of the ball and everybody got involved. You know, uh, Trey made the touchdown catch. <clears throat> Excuse me. Charlie made a couple catches and, of course, TJ's touchdown. So that gets all your skilled people pretty much involved there and got them in the end zone. Jacob kind of had an easy night too. He really didn't have to throw the ball much. He had that one touchdown to TJ in the first half, but he did well leading the team again on offense throughout that game. Uh, the offense really did well rounded, and he's the leader of them. And it was good to see that for, out of him. Oh yeah, it was, so that was, again, you know, he he's become the leader on the offense. So so uh, he's doing well on that aspect. And then uh, Gentry, as we mentioned, had one of those receiving touchdowns. I think that was the one from Connor Race. Right. He had that scamper into the end zone, too, from about 40 or so yards. Right. And he's one of those players that you really don't see get the ball on back-to-back-to-back plays where you might hand it off to Nash three consecutive plays. But when Race gets that opportunity to have the ball in his hands, he always makes the most of his opportunities. Oh, yeah, he, he's great. And then, of course, we had Keyshawn back there with him. They had some big runs. And then we got to kind of rotate there, there late. You know, we had a freshman score. Uh, but we had uh, Jeffrey Dotson had got the big long run, and so what we was doing was rotating those guys. I'm like, you know, probably could have left Jeffrey in, but uh, uh, Trip needs to come in and got the final score there at the end. So, so that that was good. And we had a lot of young guys get to play. You know, pretty much everybody on the sideline at dress got in the game, and that's kind of what we was looking for. Jeffrey had such a long mm-hmm. run; it was kind of sad to see him get pushed out so close to the end zone. Oh yeah, that's what always what happens. You know, when you get that close, but mm-hmm. uh, but, but it, it was it was a big run by him. Uh, he's doing some running back on the JV, so that was good to get some reps there in the varsity uh, time. Trip finished off that run too. Uh, he absolutely bulldozed the defender too to get into the end zone. Yeah, that Trip's a pretty good truck. Yeah, Trip's a good little athlete. You know, been a freshman. You know, we're, we we we're playing him some on the defense, and then we're able to get him on our own offense. So he's he's going to be a good athlete for us and a good player. And uh, again, it was good to see him get in the end zone. Talking about getting all of your players in there too, it's good to see them get valuable playing time in a conference game and feel that atmosphere too because. You can get them into a game where it's non-conference and non-regional where it doesn't matter as much, but to get them in a game like that where it matters more, is that kind of better for them and their confidence going oh, forward? Oh, yeah. You know, those guys get that experience, you know, getting mm-hmm. get, get in those conference games. And uh, the, 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 the hope is you give them more and more games throughout the year, and that means, you know, you're, you're doing your job. The first group's doing their job and giving these guys opportunity to play. So, so it's big getting these young guys in because they get over there and they do it all cheering on Friday night, and it's good to see them get in the game. Last question I'll ask in this first half recap, too. Last year and this year, we've talked about how much of a polar opposite it's been and how your team's kind of flipped a 180 from last year. And mostly the thing that I look at is the offense because last year you struggled to score in those first few games. Happy Valley, you saw it in the third game, you started to turn around a little more. But so far through the first two games this year, I think you've scored 82 points and you're averaging 41 points a game through those first two against Gap and Crockett. How do you, well, who do you attribute that to the most? Well, just uh, your experience under, under these guys' belts. You know, like I say, you know, we lost we lost uh, some guys last year on the offensive side of the ball uh, that that were big for us. But you know, most of those guys were back. Uh, so so it, so it's a big deal to have that year experience. And then you know, we come in. Uh, they done really well in the scrimmages. We were scoring uh, in the scrimmages that way. So so the offense really set the tone for the year. Uh, but but again, you know, we we talked this week. You know, in order uh, in order to to do what you want to do. Uh, you got to play both sides of the ball, and, and again, you know, we're, we're trying to get better defensively, and we, I feel like we are. And once we get that defense caught up with offense, then then we feel like we could have a, a successful season. Credit to Coach Case for the defense, also, but not going to give him too much credit because he declined to be on this interview this evening. That's so right. He still won't get on camera. No, uh, we'll we'll eventually get him on here. One week, hopefully one week. That's I hope it. we're not leading everybody on by talking about this, yeah. but we'll just drag him down here one day. That's it. Well, you you're the coach. You should force him to be on. That's what I might have to do. So look, guys, if you want to, if you want Coach Friday night, you got to do the show. So we might go. be able to do that. That's a good All idea. Right. That's a good one. We'll do it during an important game too. That's right. We can do it. Got an important game this Friday night too. That's it. Got a very important game. We'll talk about that after the break, though. We got to get a few messages on screen first. So when we get back, we'll talk about the Chucky Dope game this upcoming Friday night here on Grassroots Media. At Corner Pond, the friendly and knowledgeable staff has the experience necessary to help you out regardless of the need. Have an item of value you'd like to pawn or sell? Corner Pond can help. They pawn numerous items of value, including firearms, tools, ammunition, silver, coins, and much more. When you walk through their doors, you'll find well-stocked shelves full of electronics, gaming systems, fishing and hunting equipment, car audio and accessories. And don't forget about the room full of guitars and basses and amplifiers, or their outside lawn and garden equipment. 
Corner Pond is a case knife dealer and carries numerous used knives as well. Stop by and let the friendly staff at Corner Pond help you today at 432 East Bernard Avenue, Greenville, Tennessee. Pizza Inn's new Right Way Buffet is open and ready for you and your family. Now with new garlic buttery crust and stuffed crust pizza, along with salads and desserts. It's the best part of your day. The all-day, everyday buffet. Only at Pizza Inn Greenville. Welcome back to Grassroots Media. Welcome back to this week's edition of the South Mountain Real Estate Sean Jones Show, where we cover everything on Rebel Hill with the South Green Rebel football team. As always, I'm joined here with South Green head coach Sean Jones. So you've got a very important game coming up this week. This will be your first county game of the season. You'll be playing the Chucky Doak Black Knights, a team that I know you and everybody here at South Green looks forward to playing every year. So what's the anticipation like going into this year's game? Well, you know, both of us are in uh, – it's probably been a long time that both of us have went this game uh, undefeated, so so that's going to be a big deal. I think we'll expect a big crowd there Friday night. Uh, you know, Chuck, Chucky Doak's playing well. Uh, you know, last year, finished year, I think it was 10-2, and two, and uh, started off 3-0, and oh, so, so they're a real machine right now. So – well, we got to be ready to play Friday night, and it's going to be a big game at Chucky Doak. So uh, our kids are excited. So you know, we just need to go up there and uh, play well, and uh, hopefully uh, are in it in the fourth quarter and have a chance to win. This is a question that I have that probably will answer itself in a way, but with it being a county game, I know that already motivates the players to play harder because the kids know each other. There's bragging rights involved. We've talked about it for this is the third year we've talked about it now. But what do you use as extra motivation sometimes when you go into these county games? Well, the big thing is that these, these guys have got to live with these other guys on another team for the rest, the rest of their life. You know, if you, if you lose, then you got to hear it from them. And if you win, you get to enjoy that. So that's the biggest thing that with these county games. You know, it's, uh, it used to be really a whole lot bigger when all of us were in the same conference, us, West Green and Chucky Doak. And, and a few years there, North Green was in there with us. So, so it, it made it even a little bit more competitive because you knew it was a conference game. Uh, but it's still it's still the big rivalry, uh, you know, the community thing. It's it's real big for the community. Uh, the dads and moms could talk about it at work because they work with each other, and these kids will graduate, and, and some of them may go to college with each other. Uh, some of them may work with these guys. So, so it, that's the big deal is winning these games. So you got bragging rights for for the rest of your life. And I know the thing that we've talked about with Chucky Doak the last few years is they're explosive playmakers on offense. They've got three. Uh, in particular, Brazen Mervin, Brock Crush, Isaiah Treadway. I know you've scouted out all those three players too. They've got a new player in there, Nick Palazzo at quarterback now. So what have you kind of done to scout the offense and how do you prepare to stop their attack on Friday night? Well, you know, those those guys you just mentioned right there are great players. You know, we just hope to slow them down. I mean, it's, uh, you know, they've run wild uh, the first three weeks of the season. So uh, we just hope we can get in there and slow them down uh, and, and have it, like I say, have a shot in the fourth quarter to, to beat them. Uh, you know, they're, they're well coached and uh, you know, Palazzo slinging it around, and you got the you got Rush and traded way outside, and then Palazzo, or excuse me, you got Mervin, the, the running back that you know the last couple of years has rushed for over a thousand yards. So it's it's going to be tough, but you know we got to go in there and stick our head in there, and like I say, see what happens. You know, it's it, it, it's a big game. So you know, the, last year they come up here and we felt like we played well early, uh, kind of let that you know let it slip slip away a little bit there early, and, and they they caught you know they caught. Uh, and caught up in the second half and really, really put it on us. So, uh, you know, we look at that and just, you know, again, uh, with the way they're playing and, and the, the last couple of years, you know, we just, we just hope to be in it in the fourth quarter. And I know something that we've talked about this year with Chucky Doak has been their defense. Usually Chucky Doak has been known for their offense the last few years, but their defense has held their opponents to less than 22 points in all three of their games so far this year. So what have you seen on their defense that you kind of plan on attacking when you go into this game? Well, you know, I, one, one thing about it, you look and, and, and you know, we, we may line up and go some power this week, you know, uh, you know, try to establish a run that way or, uh, and, and then if we, if, you know, that's it, you know, uh, you know, maybe see if we can throw the ball, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of funny, uh, Labor Day, Coach Burns and I was at a little get together and uh, one of her friend's daughters, Haley Susong, you know, she was talking, you know, hey, hey, Coach Jones, you know, we might need to throw the ball a little bit more. So she don't realize at the moment Coach Burns is off its corner. I said, so I just kept back. I said, what do you do? Yeah, it's more exciting when you throw the ball. So, so we, we told Haley, said, all right, we'll throw the ball more this week for you, Haley. Just get out, just just get around, try to sling it around, uh, and see what happens. And then she finally realized Coach Burns was sitting there, and she kind of got embarrassed. We made a big laugh out of that. So, uh, so we, we told Haley she could be her offensive consult this week. So she wants us to throw the ball. Hey, we might. So we, we'll see what happens. Uh, but you know, uh, but but they're really good. You got rush back out safety. You got 
you got Tridwick corner that that's really good corner, so you got to be careful there. So uh, you know we just you know we just want to try to see if we can establish something. Their defense has played really well all year. Uh, get out there and try something different that, that maybe we hadn't done this year, uh, and then and throw a wrinkle to at them uh, because because they are they are pretty good defensively. So uh, I, again, you know we got to take take the opportunities we get. You know, and we got the opportunity to score. We got to score, and then, and then on defense we got got to try to slow them down, have a chance in the fourth quarter. All right. So what are your three keys going into this game too? I know the one. The last few years against Chucky Duff have kind of been the same. So what are they this year? Going well, you know, we got to slow down their their skill people. You know, they're they're, they're spacers. We got you know got to try to slow them down. Uh, you know, again, we got to execute on offense. Uh, I know we we've, we've played well the last two weeks, but this is a different uh, a bird coming here with, with Chucky Doak, and uh, so we got to execute, and then we got to try to win the the special teams game because again, you got the speedsters back there, and we got to you know try try to to, to win that, and then have, have a successful night. All right, I think that's all we've got. It's going to be an exciting game Friday night. That game will be 7.30 at the Black Hole in Lower Afton. Uh, that'll be our game of the week also. So if you're not able to make it out, you can still tune in and watch it on the Grassroots Media YouTube page that you're on right now. But anyways, if you're a South Green supporter, if you're a Chunky Doak supporter watching this too, go out to that game, check it out. Coach, that's all I've got for you this week. Thanks. Thank you for watching. I'm sure you're going to watch the Vols this Saturday oh, yeah. too. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'll be there. I'm going down. Oh, you're going yeah, there. Yeah, okay, there, so yeah. you'll be in Knoxville yeah, watching it. Yeah, I'll be in Knoxville. They got Austin P this week. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those games. Do a little tailgate and go in and see what happens. So, I'll be there. All right. Hopefully, you get a win on Friday night. Then go in, enjoy some ball football on Saturday. That's it. And then watch the Cowboys on Sunday. On oh, Monday night. Monday. Are yes, they playing the Giants Monday night? Monday night. Got ju- uh, uh, Monday night they got the- no, I take it back. Sunday night. You're I right. thought it was Sunday yeah, night. I wasn't sure. So, so I'm excited. So, again, go Rebels, go Vols, and go Cowboys on Sunday night. That's all we've got this week. Thank you for watching this week's edition of the Southbound Real Estate Sean Jones Show. Look forward to seeing you next time here on Grassroots Media.